Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the Ramadan special. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. How are you today? Alhamdulillah. How's the Ramadan going? Alhamdulillah, fine. Taqabullah. And inshallah to all our viewers as well. Taqabullah amalikum, inshallah. And inshallah, you're having a very, very spiritual and beneficial Ramadan. Sheikh, last time we were discussing from the Rasala Amali of Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, may Allah prolong his life. We were discussing the miscellaneous questions in regards to uh, fasting and, and the hukum that the Sayyid provides. Uh, let us continue. And uh, what I wanted to ask was if one person he's woken up now, he's doing his suhoor, he's eating, and then realizes that it is time for fajr, the adhan has happened and it's time for fajr, what should he do? Inshallah. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. Well, in this case, if the person was um, eating and drinking in the suhoor time, and suddenly he discovered that it is the adhan time now, or the adhan was called, he must immediately remove whatever is in his mouth. Either it's water or uh, food must be removed immediately. If that person, uh, by purpose, he swallows and or, or drinks that water or, or let's say juice or tea and so forth, and he knows that the adhan was called, but he just wanted to finish the morsel that he was eating or the water he was drinking, that is actually a deliberate break of fast. And that, of course, requires um, Allah in this case and kafara as well, because he broke it uh, by purpose. So he must uh, uh, do the fast and the kafara as well. Okay, so if if he's eating and then he finds out, oh, it's, it's fajr time now, you should just take everything out. Just exactly, everything immediately, out. straight, immediately. straight away. Take everything out, exactly. and even the little bits and stuff. You know. Anything that will. Uh, um, be reaching the throat, even okay. a small bit of rice or a small bit of, of bread must be removed from the mouth. Okay, Hassan. thank you very much, Sheikh. Sheikh, also during Ramadan, we have these timetables telling us the time of Fajr Adhan and also you know, the time of uh, Maghrib. Uh, are these actually quite reliable? Can we rely upon them? Or do you think we should exercise precaution? Well, if you're sure about the published timetables, uh, for your own city, especially the European cities, where you have sometimes um, a difference in terms of the Fajr time, um, sometimes in the, in the Maghrib time, we don't, we're not sure if it's exactly uh, Maghrib time because we can't see the signs of the Maghrib, Adan Maghrib time in Western uh, countries, Arises, yes. especially in the north, north uh, of Europe, like the Scandinavian countries. Yes. Um, in this case, you are allowed to follow uh, the local timetable, that's fine. But it's also preferable to take the precaution and uh, for the for the time, let's say, for the time of Maghrib. For, give, give it more few minutes and, uh, and then break your fast for the Maghrib Adhan. And also before the Fajr time, give it a few minutes before the Fajr time and then you stop eating and you're from eating drink. Awesome. Sheikhna. Giving blood, um, especially for medical examinations, does that invalidate my fast? So the doctor says, sorry, Mr. Shah, we need to take some blood samples because you're extremely ill. Um, they put an injection in, then they take you know, small tubes, about three, four tubes of blood as samples. Is that allowed? Is that not allowed during fasting? Well, that uh, act of taking the blood from a person would not uh, break the fast. It's not one of those invalidators of, of fast. So they can actually go to the hospital in the daytime of the month Ramadan and do the test uh, of blood test and that, 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 should, that should be fine. Okay. Sheikh, if someone's not fasting during Ramadan, um, deliberately or undeliberately, 
is he or she allowed to eat in front of other Muslims during the daytime or because of the sanctity of, of, of the month, uh, should they refrain from eating in public? Well, if that constitutes what is known as the sanctity of the holy month of Ramadan, Hurmat mm -hmm. Shah Ramadan, if that breaches that sanctity of this holy month, then it is not permissible, it's not allowed. You must make sure if you're a musafir, you're traveling, or you're an ill person, you have an excuse, a shari excuse, you go to your, to your own home or hotel, or, or you choose a place where nobody would see you, those who are fasting, and then you can uh, eat or drink. But in public, where you, uh, you cause the breach of the sanctity of this holy month, no, it's not allowed. Then you have to make sure you respect uh, the sanctity and the holiness of this holy month and avoid eating in public. That's very important. Asant Sheikhna, why is it that the Sayyid allows uh, injections and even injections of nutrition uh, and minerals? Isn't this um, actually you know, breaking the code of fasting? Well, according to the Sayyid, uh, he mentions that uh, this is because that the evidence which was given in the, in the Sharia and the Hadith, for example, and it was only and mainly to do with eating and drinking. And the, these injections uh, in overall, except the enema that we spoke about, the enema is separate, uh, yes. as, as, as an exception. Uh, in terms of the injecting from that particular place and so forth. But other injections um, are not known to be eating and drinking. Of somebody, let's say somebody is, was injected by some kind of vitamins, I don't know, nutrition. You won't tell uh, the person that he is eating or drinking. It's just an injection in the vein. That's not to be known as eating or drinking. So that's what they say it did not consider it as a muftar and uh, invalidates the, the fast. Sheikhna, are we allowed to adopt the advice of our doctor? Let's say the doctor has prescribed to me that in your condition, you are not allowed to fast or you shouldn't fast. I advise you not to. Your health will deteriorate or the disease won't go away. Um, am I allowed to not fast then based on the doctor's opinion who may not even be Muslim or Shia? Well, Yes, it is permissible for the one not to fast um, by taking the advice of the doctor, of the specialist. If that specialist or the doctor is trustworthy, the one you can trust. Uh, but the case sometimes that the doctor would advise you not to fast, but you, you feel that you can fast, then you have to fast. Because the doctor, he doesn't know the inside and out of your body. So sometimes you have an illness, but that illness, you can overcome it in, in somehow by medications, let's say, you can use. And in the daytime, you can fast. You can sleep and fast, and, you know, and then you break your fast in the, uh, around Maghrib time, normally. So sometimes it depends on your situation. Can you cope with fasting? Khalas, you can fast, that's fine. Even if the doctor advised not to fast. Mm -hmm. um, and... And vice versa, maybe the doctor says that, well, you can fast, but you feel you, say, you can't actually continue uh, the fasting in the daytime, then you shouldn't fast. So it depends, again. But mainly if the doctors are trustworthy and uh, you, you can't take the words, that's fine. You can break your fast. That sounds very good. Sheikh, what about brushing your teeth and toothpaste? What is the hukum in regards to that? Are we allowed to... Because it does bring some sort of uh, freshness to the mouth also, isn't it? And, and coolness, especially when you're you know, gargling and you're, and you're spitting out um, toothpaste. Well, it's better and recommended to use the toothpaste or the brushing just in the suhoor time before the adhan of fajr. Um, so you would avoid any kind of uh, you know, paste or liquid or water to reach the throat. Um, otherwise, if you wanted to use the toothpaste and to brush your teeth in the daytime of the month of Ramadan, you have to make sure that nothing reaches uh, your throat. So you have to slowly brush your teeth and rinse the water out from the mouth. 
and making sure nothing reaches the throat area. That's important. Sheikh, now what about when, um, you know, sometimes, because we're eating at irregular hours, um, sometimes, you know, we burp, uh, or sometimes we have an acid reflux. Something comes to the throat, food comes to the throat. Um, what is to be done? Are we allowed to swallow this back down, or are we supposed to, you know, spit it out? Well, in this case, if somebody um, feels that something is in his mouth, a small piece of bread or, or rice or anything else, they must make sure that they throw it out. Nothing must be left in the mouth. Either it was brought out and ascended internally or externally. At the end of the day, you must not uh, make sure that nothing goes through the throat whatever the size is, you know, small bit of food or large quantity, and even a drop of water, for example, you have to make sure nothing uh, remains in, uh, in your mouth uh, and to be thrown out immediately. If unintentionally this happened and you, um, you, you swallowed uh, that piece of bread or let's say rice, then the fuss is valid because it wasn't by purpose. So. That's fine, in this case. Okay, not bad. Sheikhna, also, um, you were saying that you know the sanctity of the month of Ramadan is very, very important, and also if you know if you get guests or you know you meet people, you shouldn't really give them uh, food to eat or drink, whether they're fasting or not fasting. But what's about if you have a business to do with food? What well, if you own a restaurant or a cafe? It's Ramadan time now. Uh, should you be open? And, and open for business? Well, to be honest, this is a, a major issue. Uh, we can face this, we see this um, in many of the countries um, where you can see that from the day one of the month of Ramadan, you, st you still see some restaurants and cafes are open and they are serving food. According to Sayyid's fatwa, he says to open the cafe or the restaurant in the daytime of the month of Ramadan and such like. So maybe you want to serve food on the street, for example. You have a thawab to give, for example. Well, any kind of serving food in the daytime of the month of Ramadan that constitutes a breach of the sanctity of this holy month. Again, as I mentioned, the Sayyid said it's haram. It's haram to serve food in which it breaches this uh, holiness of this great month. So they have to uh, close until the Maghrib time when the Adhan Maghrib time was called, they open, they serve iftar till the Sahar time. So it's just for them, they have to change the timetable from the daytime to the night time, and they can stay awake till, let's say, 2, p 2 a.m. in the morning and serve suhoor, for example. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sustains the rizq, he will uh, give them, inshallah, more rizq, and um, they will gain, inshallah, more customers, especially for the iftar and suhoor. Inshallah, sent. Okay, Sheikh. But it, even here in, in, in the West, where you know we're dealing with non-Muslims, um, we we should keep our restaurants and cafes closed. I've mentioned this masala, this case um, that uh, in the previous episode, I think about uh, serving food to the Muslims and non-Muslims. That the state says you're not allowed to serve for either of them. So even in the West, if you have a restaurant or a cafe, you shouldn't serve food. You know, at the end of the day, uh, serving food uh, to Muslims or even non-Muslims is an issue that the Sayyid spoke about it. So, as I've said, the best advice is to begin from the Maghrib, serving iftar, till the suhoor time. And I've said Allah SWT will uh, replace uh, that closure of, of the daytime uh, with the night time, inshallah. And they might get even more rizq and barakah. Uh, due to the blessed month of this great holy month from Ramadan, inshallah. Asan Shaykhna. Shaykhna, you know that we are coming to the nights of mourning for the, the, the martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And also we have the nights of Layl al-Qadr you know, approaching. Any advice or tips or, or any you know, wisdom that you can give to the viewers? Well, according to the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Qadr, where it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr. The night of Qadr is the best uh, night over 1,000 
month, month. Imagine the importance of this month. So we have to try to take this opportunity to open our heart and seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to take this opportunity at least for these couple of nights and shahada as well to attend the majalis of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam to commemorate the martyrdom of Imam Ali alayhi salam in these nights to read dua as much as we can. If we can take one or, one or two days off uh, due to the shahada and due to the a'mal of the Laylatul Qadr where you have to be awake all uh, night and that's mustahab, that's not wajib but it's better for the one who they can they, you know, to stay awake all night, that's great and to ask Allah forgiveness, you know, blessings, whatever haja you need, yeah, it's, it's the best time of the year so let's take this opportunity and um, seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for his forgiveness Insha'Allah, to cover Amalakum, Insha'Allah, Shaykh Lan, to cover Dua'akum, Insha'Allah. And to all the viewers, thank you for joining us on this episode. Uh, we will be returning after the Nights of Qadr, we'll be returning with Ikhqam SOS. Until then, please remember us in your Dua, and Insha'Allah, all your Amal are accepted. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.